Morning guys, welcome from wherever you're joining us this morning. In a couple moments, the worship team's gonna be leading us through some worship, but just before we get started, how about we join together in prayer? Father God, thank you so much that we have the opportunity to just meet up from wherever we're at at the moment, that we can still have church online, that technology is so amazing that we can still have the community that Encounter Church is striving for. Um, really do just pray that your hand is over this morning, that we can learn something new about you and we can enjoy this time together. Amen. declare this morning in this place that you are the lamb, the lamb that was slain and we worship you as the one who has taken our place, who has taken our sins and set us free from the curse of sin and death. And Lord, we also worship you as the lion, the lion of Judah, who was brought back to life in the power of the Holy Spirit on that third day. And we declare that you are the one who is victorious, you are in control, and we worship you this morning and we give you all the praise. Lord, who can stop you? For you are the one who is moving and working, moving your will into this place and into our world, and we give you praise. Who can stop you, Lord?
In Romans, we read about the wonderful hope that is ours because of Christ Jesus. And we read this, that this hope is not a disappointing fantasy, that because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. This is the wonderful hope that we have because of Jesus. I love that. The endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. I really pray that this is our experience during this time in whatever circumstances we find ourselves in, that we would know that the Holy Spirit is pouring the endless love of God and our Saviour Jesus into our hearts. Let's sing our praise and our thanks to the Lord for this wonderful thing. Jesus Christ is our living hope.
what great words to end our time of worship in this way. Lord Jesus, your presence is with us. Your love cascading into our places, into our hearts, into our circumstances. You are our living hope. Please accept this worship from our hearts this morning. We give you our praise. Thanks, worship team, for leading us in that worship this morning. So, it's Mother's Day today, and Encounter Church really just wants to extend a massive thank you for all of the women, whether you're mothers or not, in our lives who are making such a difference every single day. You should have received a wonderful gift this morning that was hand-wrapped, and we do hope that it's a blessing for you guys. We have a message from a few of our friends this morning who just want to send a big thanks to all of the mums in our lives. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. If I could say one thing that my mum was good at, it would be cooking because she get, cooks us delicious meals every night and we enjoy them thoroughly. If I could defy my mum with the fruit of the spirit, I would say patience because she is very organised and she always tries her best and she never gets um, angry that much. It stays calm. <laughs> Okay, bye. <laughs> I like how Ali takes me places and makes really good food. Happy Mother's Day! I like my mum because she makes the best dinner. I like my mum because she's always kind to me and joyful. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Mm, happy Mummy's Mummy! Happy Mother's Day! We love you! Happy Mother's Day! We love you! Happy Mother's Day! Why do you love Mum? <laughs> Why do you love Mummy? Because I want to give Mummy a present. Because you want to give Mummy a present? Yeah. Is Mummy a good Mummy? Yeah. She does lots of cooking and lots of looking after Max and Lexi. <laughs> yeah. Lexi! your fingers. All right. He said, I love you, Mum. Love you, Mum. See ya. Bye bye. bye. So we're about to join together in a time of communion, but we just want to quickly give you some time to go and grab your juice and your crackers and get ready for that just kind of time of reflection with God. Thanks, Lockie. Welcome around the communion table with me this morning. I just want to share a little illustration, something that happened to me during my week. Um, I work at a school and, um, and sometimes the language with young people can get a little bit out of hand, um, a little bit of swearing and... Um, and just teasing each other and stuff like that. And so one of the rules we have at our campus is if you say anything inappropriate, then you have to go for a walk down to the basketball courts, um, no matter what the weather. So this week it was quite challenging for a couple of our students, one in particular um, on that really wet, blustery day. Um, as he let out uh, a swear word, um, I kind of looked across the room and said, well, you know what the rules are, man, you've, you've got to go for a walk. And um, he was like, oh, far out of uh, complaining and moaning. And then something really strange happened. From across the room, um, another young guy just stood up and said, I'll do it for him. And he, he wandered out of the classroom, down to the basketball ring in the rain and back again. And I stopped the class at that point and I said, you know what, what he's just done is an awesome depiction of what Jesus Christ did for us. Of course, um, all the kids in the class groaned uh, because Troy was sharing another Jesus story. But um, it did remind me of the scripture we find in Romans 3.23 um, and onwards. It starts by saying, for all have sinned and fall short of the glorious of our glorious God. Yet now God in his gracious kindness declares us not guilty. He has done this through Jesus Christ, who has freed us by taking away our sins. For God sent Jesus to take the punishment, this is the part I want to hone in on, to take the punishment for our sins and to satisfy God's anger against us. 
We are made right with God when we believe that Jesus shed his blood, sacrificing his life for us. Now, part of what we do at school is we try and coach these young people into being different, but we know that there's going to be slip-ups. Just like in life as Christians, we do not live that perfect standard. Romans 3.23 tells us that. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yet, we know that that scripture goes on to say that Jesus actually took our punishment for sin. And he did that by going to the cross for us, by laying down his life, by having his body broken and his blood shed. And so communion is just quite a simple reminder. We do it weekly as a church to say, Jesus, we recognize what you've done for us, taking our punishment, taking our sin, and doing that, like taking it upon yourself, declaring us righteous and holy so that God would see, look down and see a righteousness in us that has only ever been done because of what Jesus has done in our life. So if you have your, uh, uh, your bread or a cracker or something like that to, to use this morning, let's all celebrate that illustration of Jesus, not just an illustration, but that act of Jesus on the cross as he took the punishment for our sins. Why don't you eat the bread with me? We eat the bread because Jesus did. He broke it with his disciples and he shared it amongst them and said, do that in remembrance of me. In the same way, he, he took a cup of wine and he said, this is the fruit, that, um, the, the fruit of the vine. He said, I will not drink it again until I drink it with you in heaven. But he asked us to, to think about his blood, think about his blood shed for us as that awesome act of forgiving us for our sins as we remember Christ. Why don't you drink with me? Jesus, we thank you that when God looks and sees us, he sees you. He sees your righteousness. He sees your purity because you committed something awesome on that day. You walked to the cross and you, you took our sins. You took the judgment. You took all of our wrongdoing and you nailed it to the cross saying, God, I will take that all upon myself for my people. And we thank you for this, Jesus. We could never repay you. We could never earn it. So we just simply say thank you and we remember what Christ has done for us. Amen. I'm going to invite Pete now to help us continue our sermon series on road trip. And so thanks, Pete. Hey, thanks for leading us in communion. It's great to reflect and to ponder on the great things that Jesus has done for us and does in us. You know, today we're carrying on with our series around road trips and one of the great things that you love to do on a road trip is to eat and to feed. You know, many of you I know look out for the petrol station as you're going down the road and love to get inside and see the Bay Marie. Maybe it's a big greasy truck burger you can see there or a dried out dim sim and you think, oh, how good is it to feed on a road trip? Maybe you're more of a snacker. Perhaps you're actually one of these people who likes to pack a few celery sticks and carrot sticks and have a bit more of a healthy feed along the way. But on any road trip, you need to be feeding and you need to be eating along the way. You probably need to be feeding the people in the back as well. You know, one of the great uh, feedings I had on a road trip was we hired a camper van before kids, me and Alyssa, and we were driving the camper van. We hired it in Brisbane. We we're going to drive it down to Sydney. But before we did that, we thought we'd just pop up to the Sunshine Coast. And just in from the Sunshine Coast is the Big Pineapple. It's one of Australia's great icons. And we went into the shop, the little markets that was in there, and there was the piece of the restaurant. It was five bars of Rocky Road for $10. That's $2 each for any of you guys who are thinking about the mathematics at home. And that became our morning tea for the next five days. As we travelled in that camper van down towards Sydney, we'd stop off at a beautiful picturesque place and we would get our cup of tea, uh, we would get our Rocky Road and we'd have Rocky Road and we'd have cup of tea. It was just the most beautiful feeding on this road trip. You know, feeding 
is a part of being on a road trip and feeding yourself uh, spiritually on a road trip like we're talking about at the moment is also really, really important. You've got to become people who feed ourselves so that also that we can feed others. In Acts chapter 18, we see Paul on his journey uh, stopping at different places to feed and to share the good news and the things of God with other people. In Acts chapter 18, verse 9 to 11, it says this, One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. For I am with you and no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half teaching them the word of God. You know, Paul stopped for a fair while there to teach the word of God. It goes on in later in this chapter in verses, uh, verse 24 to talk about other people who were around Paul also stopping to share the good news of God with other people. It says this in verse 24. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and he spoke with great fervor. And taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue when Priscilla and Aquila, two other Christians, heard him. They invited him to their home and explained to him the ways of God more adequately. So you see this pattern of people sharing the good things of God, sharing what they've been feeding on, and then sharing it with other people on the journey of the faith life. And that's the call for us as Christians too, to be people who are actually feeding others on this journey of life. But hey, if you want to be someone who feeds others, you first of all need to be someone who feeds yourself. You see, we can't feed others unless we're feeding ourselves. The psalmist in Psalm 119 verse 93 says this, I will... Never, um, he says, I'm going to read it from the scripture here in in verse 93. It says, I will never forget your precepts or I'll never forget your commands for by them you have preserved my life. You've preserved my life by your commands. I will never forget them. That comes from a wider piece of scripture in Psalm 119 when the writer wrote this. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness is continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it it endures. Your laws endure to this day for all things serve you. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts for by them you have preserved my life. Save me for I am yours. I have sought out your precepts or your ways. The wicked are waiting to destroy me, but I will ponder your statutes To all perfection I see a limit, but your commands, your ways are boundless. Oh, how how I love your law. I meditate on all day and night. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all of my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes or on your word. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. What a great picture in a sense that is. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Wow. The writer is so descriptive. You really get a sense of that when he says there that it is like honey, it's sweeter than honey to my mouth. Can you think of the sweetest honey that you've ever eaten? And just think that the scripture is sweeter than that to your to your mouth. That that's what that's the picture that the psalmist is sharing with us. It's a real picture of the importance of the word of God being in your mouth, being in your soul, being in your heart and being the thing that nourishes you. You feed on the word of God. You know, in the scripture it talks about that our eyes Uh, The things that we take in through our eyes and through our ears, that they uh, feed our heart and our soul. Our heart and our soul are like a sponge for the things that come through our eyes and through our ears. And they sit in our heart and in our soul. Our heart and our soul, the scripture says, it's from the overflow of our heart, the mouth speaks. And James chapter 3 tells us what we speak actually directs our life. Therefore, what we're feeding on, what we're eating in a spiritual sense, is really, really important because actually it directs the path 
of our life. It makes sense then to be making sure that we're feeding on things that are good and you can't get anything more good than the word of God. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3 says this, He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The word of the Lord, Jesus himself, becomes the bread of life that feeds us, that allows us to keep going. You know, if you're only feeding on Sundays or at conferences, you're getting a quick burst of energy, then a long long time of lethargy. It's just like eating real sweet food. Bang, you get real up, up, and high, high, high. But unless you've got some uh, slow GI foods, you get lethargy very, very quickly. You need to be feeding regularly on the Word of God, which is like a slow GI food. It gives you sustained energy. And so how do we do that? How do we live and grow on sustained energy? It's spending regular time in the Word. And so some of the ways that you can do that are varied, but some of the ways that are happening in our church community right now is our youth are looking at an online devotional through Right Now Media. Now, many of you have Right Now Media, and I think all of you have access if you're connected to our church community here. But it's just one place where you can find an online devotional, and it's thematic. And so it takes you through a day-by-day reading, feeding on the Word of God, and being able to put it into practice. You know, the beauty uh, of that one that the youth are doing is it actually shows when you did it. So it creates a positive peer pressure too for all of those people who think, oh, I'd like to read. I want to make sure that I'm keeping up with everyone. It's got that element as well. But reading online, being accountable to others, is a good way of making sure that you feed yourself. Remember, you can't feed others if you're not feeding Yourself, You know, uh, our children's ministry uh, got a placemat uh, in the last week sent out to them. And on the bottom of there, it came with four weeks of a program called SOAP. Now, SOAP isn't anything new, but it's just a way of reading the scripture, observing what you notice, applying it, and then praying into it that God's Holy Spirit might help you live out the things that you have been doing. So how does that work in reality? If you're thinking, oh, how do I feed on the Word of God? So you might be reading through the book of Matthew. It's the gospel. It's the great story of Jesus. And as you read that, you might choose to read uh, five or six verses at a time. So you read those five or six verses. But before you read it, you talk to God and say, God, would you show me, would you highlight to me something, make something stand out to me? And you just read slowly over those five or six verses and wait for God to show you something. When something stands out to you, when you notice something, that's what it means, you get your highlighter like my orange one here, and you underline it in the Bible, just write on it like that. That's the scripture. Then I want you to get a piece of paper and a pen and you write that scripture down. Write that verse down that stood out to you or that bit of the verse. You write it down. Then underneath that, you put your O, because SOAP is an acronym, and O is for observations. You write down what are all the things I notice about that scripture. And you write down all the things that you notice about it, all the interesting things, the things that make you question, the pondering things. Then the A stands for application. How is that going to apply to my life? You know, the scripture apply to our life all the time. But if we're not reading scripture in a way that applies to our life, we're just reading it for head knowledge and not for life knowledge. And so application, you write down, what does that look like to me in my family? What does that look like to me in my workplace? What does that look like to me in my school or my education? What's the application? What am I going to do about it this week? Am I, is it going to, how's it going to change the way I respond to people? You write that down in the application. So you've written your scripture. You've written your observation, you've written your application, and P stands for prayer. Now you're going to pray and thank God for that scripture and ask him to bring that scripture to life in your life this week and to help you to live out that scripture or that application in the daily space. It's called soap. You're devouring the word, you're putting it into action, you're feeding yourself. Hey, we're on a road trip uh, around the moment through things that are out of our control, but this Christian journey is a road trip as well. And we need to be feeding ourselves, just like the guys in the Bible. We need to be scripture feeding ourselves on the scripture, on the word of God, because without feeding ourselves, we don't have the long term energy to feed anybody else. And so, once you've fed yourself, then you know what? You can start to feed those in the back seat or feed those that are around you. And so, in Acts chapter 17, We see Paul uh, in Berea, and he's talking to the Bereans. And it says this in verse chapter 10 of Acts chapter 17. As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. 
On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now, the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. Let's hope the guys in Thessalonica aren't reading that. Could keep that one under wraps a little bit. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul was saying was true. Wow, can you imagine that? The apostle Paul is talking, but they receive the scripture, but they don't just go, oh, whatever Paul says must be right. No, no, they get the scriptures out and they go through what Paul was saying and they say, is what Paul's saying true? Does it line up with what the word is saying? You know, another way that we can make sure the word is getting to us is when you hear a good message online, when you hear a good message on YouTube, when you hear a good message, don't just say, oh, that's, that's the gospel, so to speak. Get your Bible out and have a look and go through it. That's what the Bereans were doing. And it says that they were eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Wow, I can use that. So as they heard the scripture that Paul was teaching, they looked into it more, and then from that they started to believe in Christ themselves and put those things into their life. So not only then is Paul fed himself, but now he's beginning to feed others. You know, as people of faith today, we are called to use the things that God has taught us to teach others, not in an arrogant way, not in a way that I've got knowledge and you don't, but saying, hey, here's some things that I've learned and these might help your situation. You know, the things of God are useful for all different things. It's a picture a little bit like a bird, you know, uh, feeding its young. If you've ever seen on a, one of those documentary series, the mother bird goes out and it feeds and it comes back and probably should come with a graphic warning here. But what it does is the mother bird comes back and the little baby birds open their mouth up uh, and the mother bird regurgitates what she has eaten into the baby's mouth so that the baby might be nourished as well. You know, that's a great picture for us as Christians. As we feed on the Word of God and we uh, get sustained energy from that, then we are called to then regurgitate that onto other people so that they might grow in the things of Christ as well until they grow in maturity and start feeding themselves. You know, the Holy Spirit draws out of our heart what is stored up in our heart. And so as we've fed ourselves on this road trip and our heart is full of the things of God, the Holy Spirit then can draw those things out of us so that we can then share those in moments that the Holy Spirit draws us into. The Holy Spirit draws us into moments of importance all the time. 2 Timothy 3, 14 and 17 says this about the Word of God. But as for you, as for you and me, continue in what you have learnt and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you've learnt it and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus, all scripture, all scripture, all the word is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. So that, here we go, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good Work. You know that you and me have been designed for good works. Whether you know it today, whether you know Jesus or not, you have been designed for good words. And the word of God has been given to us to build us up so that we are ready to do what God has called us to do and to live the life that he has called us to live out. We share the word of God out of what we have fed on ourselves, then we are able to feed that onto others that they might grow into the good things that God has called. And so it goes on and on and on and on. So then the one question asks then after that is, what are you feeding on? What are you feeding on? You know, in a time like now where some of us have more time on our hands than others, some of us are rushed off our feet, both of those issues cause issues in what we're feeding on. But what are you feeding on right now? What things of God are you putting in your mouth? Talking about the Word of God. I'm talking about commentaries and scriptures that, uh, and other books that, that feed into the Word of God, that increase our fervency for Him. But the Word of God, what are you doing and what are you feeding on right now? That's the question I'm asking to each one of us, wherever you might be sitting on. And then what are you sharing with other people? What is it that you are being called by God to share? What's the learning? What's the revelation that God has given you through the Word of God? Through... His word, through his rhema, what's he given you then to share with other people? Because you know what? God wants you to feed on this for yourself first, but then he wants to bring that out of you to share with others. So what are you feeding on and what are you sharing 
with other people? That's the question for this road trip because every great road trip has a great feeding story. Your great feeding story can be the word of God today. Hey, why don't I pray for you and uh, ask God to bless each one of us on this journey. Heavenly Father, God, we want to thank you for the road trip that you have us on right now. Father, we want to thank you that you have given us your word. You haven't created us, left us on earth with nothing to follow, but you've actually given us your word and you've called us to feed on it. You say that we, we, we do not live on, on bread alone, but on the things of God and on Christ himself. And so, God, would you help us to grow in you by feeding on your word? Lord, would you help us to put a pattern in our life to feed on your word? Maybe today you're being uh, prompted in that area of the soap that we were using in, in amongst our young people. Maybe you've been prompted in the area of uh, an, an online reader. Whatever it is, make sure you respond to Christ today. In Jesus, we ask that you would help us to take that step. Lord, help us to be observant to the things around us so that we might share the things that you have taught us in a time when you've called us to share them. We thank you for your scriptures today. In your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. You know, this week we're doing some virtual foyers, so I look forward to seeing you in the virtual foyer if you're going to be there. Ladies, mothers, women in our community, again, let me say thank you for the role that you play in our community. Thank you for the roles that you play in our lives. Our lives would not be the same without you. And so whatever role you play, we want to say thank you. Make sure today you thank the women in your life. It's a special day to do that. And we look forward to speaking and spending more time with you in the future.